All right, flipped geometry, how you doing? You ready for another lesson? We're going to jump into 1.5 today, segment and angle measure. And this is looking at how do you measure a segment? How do you measure an angle? Pretty simple stuff, but yet there's a lot of terminology involved with it. So um, let's go ahead and dive on in. Um, the first idea is a ruler postulate. And you know how to use a ruler. Every point on a line can be placed on a one-to-one -one correspondence with a real number. So you can use a line as a measure, as a ruler, and look at the distance between two points. And every point along the line corresponds to a number. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1.5, 1.6, 1.7. And depending on what scale you use and how you want to number your line, every point on there can represent an actual number and a distance from the, the point of origin there. Okay, um, A coordinate. A coordinate is a term that we'll use, and it means... Uh, the point of a the point on a number line that then uh, corresponds to a number. So if I say what's the coordinate of six, you would find the sixth little hash mark or something like that on the line and say that's the coordinate of six. And then there's another coordinate for seven, and you could have six point five. And so we're just looking at the place on the line that corresponds to a particular number. That would be its coordinate. So once we have number lines and we have numbers on a line, we can measure the distance between these points on a number line, right? If you want to know how far is it from 7 to 12, well, you just subtract 12 minus 7, you get 5. And there's 5 units between some place named 7 and some place named 12 on a number line. So this is really simple stuff, but we have to talk about these terms because we're going to use them. So length is how far between two points. So if you want to measure a segment, you would get the coordinate of the two points that define the segment. And you'd subtract those two coordinates, and you would find out the length of that segment. Okay, We'll do some examples here in a minute. So let's find the length of some of these segments on this example number line. So this is my example number line. Here's the origin. Going this direction is a negative number. Going this direction is a positive number. So this would be 5, this would be 6, 7, 8, etc. Okay. Find the length of each of these segments. Segment BD. B is over here at negative 5, and D is over here at positive 2. So what's the, what's the, the magnitude of difference between 2 and negative 5? Well, you'd subtract, right? 2 minus negative 5, which remembering algebra, you'd add because it's minus a negative. So 2 minus negative 5 is 7, right? Yes. 2 plus 5. Yes, so the distance is 7, and so the length there would be 7. Now, these are absolute values. It doesn't matter if you um, do the other direction. If you say negative 5 minus 2, then you have negative 7, but it's the absolute value. We're just taking the distance. So whether you get a positive or negative number, all we care about is the magnitude of the number, not its sign. Okay, so this is AE. How far apart is A and E? E is over here at 3. A is over here at negative 5, 6, 7. No, 8. Negative 8. Negative 8 and 3. Let's go this way just so we can show that it works both directions. Negative 8 minus, oh, is that 3? Yes. Negative 8 minus 3 is negative 11, which, the magnitude of which is 11. So the distance there is 11. EC. E is at 3. C is at negative 1. 3 minus negative 1 is 4. So the distance there is 4. Okay, pretty simple stuff. Now that we can measure segments, we can determine if two segments are the same length. So if we were to measure two segments and find that they are exactly as long as each other, we would say that they are congruent. Congruent segments are segments with equal lengths. And we have a cool little symbol that you haven't seen before. It's an equal sign with a top hat, right? The squiggly top hat on the equal sign means if it were just equal, we would say that these are the same segments, but they're not. They are different segments, but they happen to be the same length. So we use the equal sign in part to say that they have the same length, but this squiggly thing is like the approximation symbol. So it's approximation and equal. What we mean by that is they're not exactly the same segment. They're different segments, but they are the same length. And the word there is congruent. That's what we use for that. Okay. Another definition, we've already talked about betweenness in the last lecture. But now, now that we are talking about measuring segments, we can do something else with segments 
uh, with a point between two other points. If we have ABC so that B is between A and C, then the length of A and B adds up to the length of B and C. And that would mean that B is between A and C, right? So you can add segments and get the length of the larger segment as long as a point in the middle is actually between the points on the edge. We'll show you a picture and it'll make sense in a moment. So here's our example. If we have point B between A and C, then we can add AB and BC and get AC. Now, if these were just numbers, that would be easy. 3 and 4, the whole thing is 7. But we can also make it even more fun and have you do algebra in it. And so let's do that. Let's add AB and BC and find out what X equals, right? 6X minus 1 and 5X plus 10. That's the length of this and that's the length of this. And if the whole thing equals 75 units, then 6x minus 1 plus 5x plus 10 equals 75. And I can tell you the length of A and B. It's pretty cool. Let's do some algebra and some geometry at the same time. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I'm so excited. AB plus BC equals 75. Let's substitute in those two terms. So 6x minus 1 plus 5x plus 10 equals 75. Now let's combine like terms. So 6 plus 5 is 11. Negative 1 plus 10 is 9. 11x plus 9 equals 75. Now let's get the uh, 9 over on the other side. So subtracting 9 from both sides, I have 11x equals 66. Solve for x. x is 6. Now I can tell you how far AB and BC are by putting in 6 for x, right? So AB equals 6 times 6 minus 1, which is 35. And BC equals 5 times 6 plus 10, which is 40. So this is 35 and this is 40, and together that equals 75. Isn't that awesome? Algebra and geometry together, it's like magic. I know, so exciting. Um, midpoints, this is the next term we're going to talk about. Since we have a point between two other points and we have a segment that we've divided, we have the midpoint. A, uh, if a point is just between, then the two segments add up to the whole. But if the two segments have the same measure, so the segment on one side is congruent to the segment on the other, then we have found not just a point between, but we found the midpoint. So again, if XM is congruent to MY, these two have the same measure, and these little hash marks here mean that they have the same measure. Then M is not just between X and Y, M is the middle of XY, right? It's the midpoint. So X, M, Y, just shows us that they're that they're in a line and but if I tell you that XM is equal to MY or that they're congruent then we have found actually the midpoint of that segment okay protractor postulate this is interesting any angle and we're gonna call it a can be placed on a one-to-one -one correspondence with a degree measure less than or equal to 180 degrees a protractor you've seen a picture of these things before a protractor is a, is a half circle and we use them to measure degrees and every degree you measure will be or every angle you measure is less than 180 degrees because you're measuring the interior of the angle. If you've got something bigger than 180 you're measuring the exterior of the angle you just need to turn your protractor over. All right. So angles are classified according to their angle measures. If an angle is greater than or equal to 90 or if it is 90 or if it's a straight line we have some special terms so let's go through those. If it's less than a 90 degree angle, we call it an acute angle. And this is kind of easy to remember. Acute is small. And generally speaking, cute things are small. Kids, puppies, kittens, things of that nature. It's a small angle. It's a cute angle, right? Okay. Um, right angles are 90 degrees. So right means 90. And then an obtuse angle. Obtuse actually means, well, it can mean a couple things. But one of its meanings is fat. So this is a fat angle, right? It's bigger than 90 degrees. And so this is a, a larger angle. And so uh, acute, right, and obtuse are less than 90, equal to 90, greater than 90. There's also such a thing as a straight angle, which kind of doesn't make sense. If something is 180 degrees, then it's a straight line. And we have a straight line. You don't see straight angles very much. But a straight angle is 180 degrees because it's 
not really an angle, <laughs> it's 180 degrees. Okay, moving on. Now, if a right angle is a right angle, there's a symbol we can use. We can either draw um, the angle with a box in it, and that box means that this is a right angle, right? Or if we're just talking about lines that meet at a right angle, we can use this little symbol here. It looks like an upside down T to say that it's a, that they're meeting at a right angle. Okay, so either this box or this upside down T work just fine. Um, segments razor lines that intersect to form right angles are called perpendicular. Perpendicular is another word that means it's a right angle. These lines are perpendicular. They meet at a right angle. All right. So let's do an example. Let's find the measure of an angle, then classify it as acute, right, or obtuse. So here's our imaginary protractor. And when you use a protractor, you always want the baseline to go through 0 and 180. And then the angle that you're measuring, you put this hole on the protractor right over the vertex. So that's important for, for measuring angles. And you'll get a lot of practice with this in class. Um, angle BAC, we start at B, we go to A, we go to C. So we're measuring this angle. Now, there are two numbers here. There's 60 and 120. 60 is an acute angle. 120 is an obtuse angle. What is this, just visually? This is an acute angle. It's less than 90 degrees. So make sure that you're using the right scale. You make sure that you are using the one that starts at zero and gets bigger this way, and to read it at 60 degrees, okay? And that is acute. EAB, EAB, we're measuring the same point on the protractor, but now it would be wrong to say 60 because this angle is obtuse. This is bigger than 90, so I want to be using the scale that starts on the right side and goes over this way. This is 120 degrees, and that's an obtuse angle. Okay, and then B, A, D. Now, it would be more logical to take your protractor and rotate it so that you've got this line along the base of the protractor. You wouldn't ever read it this way, but let's just do it. This is 180, sorry, 120, and this is 30. So if I were to rotate the protractor, I could like erase these 30 degrees. So that would be 120 minus 30. This is a 90 degree angle, and it is a right angle. Just like we have congruent segments, we also have congruent angles. If two angles are the same measure, then they are congruent. And we can use the same uh, top hat equal sign um, to represent congruent angles. And when we write, uh, when we mark up our diagrams to say they're congruent, we put a little hash mark across the angle, say that's the same. And this hash mark and this hash mark would let the reader know that this angle is the same as this angle, that they are congruent, both of them at 60 degrees. Um, oh, I just skipped something I didn't mean to. Uh, angle X is congruent to angle Y if the measure of angle X is, is equal to the measure of angle Y. Or conversely, if the measure of angle X is the same as measure of angle Y, then they're congruent, okay? So congruence and equality are very similar ideas. Now an adjacent angle. Adjacent angles are angles that share a side and are in the same plane. So angle MNK and angle KNP both share ray and K as a side of the angle. And they are in the same plane. They're drawn on the same piece of paper here. And so angles in the same plane that share a side are adjacent. Okay, They don't have any common interior points, or they wouldn't be adjacent. They'd be overlapping. So this interior is different from this interior, and they share a side. They're, they're adjacent angles. Okay, So here's the angle addition postulate. If a ray is formed in the interior of an angle, you can add up these two smaller angles and get the measure of the greater angle. It's a lot like segment addition that we just did where something was between two other endpoints and we can take this segment and add it to this segment and get the whole segment. Same thing happens with regard to angles. So measure of angle MNK plus the measure of angle KNP equals the measure of angle MNP. Okay, and this helps you, you'll use this all the time, um, improving angles, okay? So you can add up two smaller angles that are adjacent and get the measure of the larger angle. Let's do that. Let's find the measure of angle 2 and the measure of BAD. 
if one equals 55 degrees, one is 55 degrees, and look at these hash marks going across, it tells us that these two angles are congruent angles. They are the same measure. So if this is 55 and this is congruent, then that also is 55. And then 55 plus 55 means that the angle BAD is 110. There you go. It's not very hard, is it? Um, we're going to move on here. Just kidding. That's all there is. So let me know if you have any questions in class tomorrow, and we will answer them. And uh, until then, God bless you. Jesus loves you, and so do I.